Well, hey, uh, where we are today is right now we are on the uh, road, Farm uh, Forest Service Road 213, uh, right at parking lot number 8. And this is the entrance to the Lone Star Trail from parking lot number 8. And we are going to take an off-trail trip to Hidden Lake and camp for the evening. Uh, it's a fairly easy trail. It's well marked. Where you want to go is to the uh, Lone Star Hiking Trail Club website. And you want to get the uh, USGS maps. They've got three maps. This is for the four-notch section. You're looking for the map for the four-notch section. And you want the second or third choice for maps on here. Because they show this little uh, off-trail jaunt we're going to go on fairly well. And it's a red dashed line. So uh, we'll stop along the way. We'll tell you how long we've been. I'll show you where the, the, the major intersections and landmarks are and show you how to get there. All right, now what we're going to do to start is we're going to leave parking lot number eight and we're just going to go down Forest Service Road 213, heading roughly east, I think it is. Okay, here we are at the end of uh, the Forest Service Road. Uh, that's where we came from. Parking lot number eight is up that way. And we'll just pan around here. This gate is closed most of the year. It's open now because of deer season. This is Greg D. He's going to be with us today. This is his first hammock hanging trip. And where we're going to go is we're going to go around this berm and down that old logging road right there. So like I said, 14 minutes and let me look, 22 seconds to this point. Okay, all right. Okay, we're at 16 minutes and 42 seconds, just about two minutes after we cross that berm. And we come to our first decision. It's this red post right here. And if you look at it, it says property boundary, National Forest. Now what that means is everything on that side of the post is in the National Forest. And on this side of the post is private land. Now, one of the things you might notice if you look at a map of Texas uh, uh, National Forest, they look like a patchwork quilt. And that's because when Texas joined the Union, they signed a treaty whereby they retained title to all the land within the borders of, the, of Texas. They didn't cede any of it to the uh, federal government. So when uh, entities like this are created, they still have to respect private property boundaries. Now, the official, unofficial trail goes around this private property. I don't know anybody who's ever taken that trail. This old road, there's an empty gate here. In Texas, if there's no gate, it's pretty much an invitation to walk through. So, you can make your choice and go that way or that way. We are going to go that way. Okay, now we are at 20 minutes and 15 seconds. And the reason why I'm stopping here is that there are certain times of the year when the trail looks like it might head off in that direction. The actual one turns to the left here. Okay, I'll give a slow pan. We'll, we'll go back and see how Greg and the dogs are doing. And there's the road we came in on. So let me just pan this around a little bit so you kind of get used to this area. But just remember, after you've been hiking 20 minutes, you might think you need to turn to the right when you really need to turn to the left. Okay, now after about 22, 23 minutes, right after that turn, you'll come to this little sunken road. There's a nice place to sit and have a drink. Maybe a little snack on your way. I think we're about halfway there now. Okay, and at roughly 23 minutes, we come back out on National Forest property. That red post there is the end of the private property we've been on. Uh, that alternate route that I showed you doesn't come out here. It comes out, crosses this creek. I don't know if you can see it, but it crosses this creek. Oh, about 20, 30 yards 
down the trail here, you're going to take a right hand turn right here after you go through this old gate. Okay, here we are roughly 24 minutes and this is where that alternative trail comes through and intersects this old logging road. Uh, you can see it's not really all that well used and you've got a creek crossing right there. And one of the reasons why I like to take the trail that we're going to do is the creek crossing that we're going to come to right down here. Okay, we're at about 25 minutes, just a short bit after that other trail came in here, and this is one of my, this is actually one of my favorite spots in the whole National Forest, uh, mainly because it doesn't stay the same. Uh, it changes a lot. Let me pan around here and, and, and show you a couple things here. Now this little creek coming in here comes into the end of a very, very large diameter culvert. We'll see that here in a minute. There's a fence post yonder, and over here we have an old sheet metal building, and we can get a better idea of the diameter of that culvert with the creek coming through. Now, the first time I came out here about three years ago, the road that came across here was fairly wide. It wasn't eroded like that. Let me get down here and show you something. Now we had three years of drought and there was a lot of deadfall in the forest all around. And then the drought ended with some what we call down here fog choking rain. And what that did was is it lifted all that debris up and put it into this creek bed. This creek bed is deeper than the last time I was here, too. Anyway, what that did was, it took all that debris and it plugged up this end of that culvert. And the resulting volume of water behind it and the water going over it did double duty to, to erode the bank and it pushed this culvert about six feet in that direction. It's just absolutely amazing the power of water out in the forest. It does things you'll never know it's doing. Now, the other thing I'll tell you is this little building over here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's some fencing up there and it's decorative on top. It's typical of fencing used in the early part of the 20th century, and, and the construction of this building is pretty much typical of that, too. So, just as a wild-ass guess, I would say this building was first put out here in the teens, or the first 20, 30 years of, of, uh, of the last century. And when it was abandoned, I don't know. But it's a possibility it was a dwelling, or uh, a uh, long-term you know, I, like, I'm like an overseer or somebody out here for the logging operation, because this was, this was deep logging territory out here. And then after it was all logged off, it was agricultural property. Uh, a lot of pasture land out here. And eventually the, the government took it over and, and some of it laid fallow, the trees grew back up. All the forest you see out here isn't any older than about 50, 60 years. Okay, uh, we are at the most critical turning point, and I can't tell you how long we've been walking because somehow while walking, the uh, stopwatch recycled to zero. I can tell you it was about three and a half minutes. We're about three and a half minutes from where it recycled to zero. So, uh, best laid plans. What I want to show you is all right, we just came up that road. We are at the top of a rise. We're about 30 minutes, 31, 32, into the hike. Okay, so we just came up this rise, and we are at the top. Say hi to Greg. And, and what I want you to look, like, look at is, it looks like the road goes in that direction. As a matter of fact, if you look up there, you, can, you might even be able to make out that it looks like there's a clearing up there. Don't go down the good-looking road, okay? Uh, you will end up on Forest Service Road 213A. 
you can take a right hand turn on it and go down to the pipeline right away uh, and then follow the pipeline right away where we're going to go but that's not the best way to go where you want to go is down this faint little track right here and the way to tell where we are is this barbed wire fence right here it's on the left as you're heading out fence post burned at the bottom tree is burned but this is your marker to turn right okay it's about a minute maybe 45 seconds since we made that turn and you come to the next most critical point you've got a road that you can go to to the left or you can go straight ahead you want to go to the left now I'm going to look around here for the principal marker and here it is right here what you're looking for is that stone culvert that concrete culvert right there last year we came through and we marked this and somebody has knocked it down but you want to go down that road and you get to this old culvert easy as pie right we are about three minutes from where we took that critical turn I just wanted to point out to you it, it's during certain times of the year it appears that the trail goes that way but you're looking for that fence post and that barbed wire fence and you want to go that way you can see where some of the engineers tape is okay we're somewhere around 10 minutes from where we took that critical turn and, and come to this pond off on the right not sure that I would drink any water out of that and it's not really necessary because there's some even better filterable sources right down the way all right here we got coming down the trail Cody the animal Alan who said he was going to ride his mountain bike so I took off without him figuring he'd get here about the same time we did and this animal started walking about 30 minutes after we did and got here the same time okay now what I just want to let everybody know is Cody followed that you've probably been here before uh, you're at the end of the road that we took on that 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 critical turn this cleared area down here is the pipeline right away that goes to uh, service road 213a and this over here to our right is Boswell Creek and Hidden Lake is over on the other side so uh, we're gonna let's see we're about 10 11 minutes from where we made that critical turn okay so yeah we're about an hour elapsed time to Hidden Lake let's cross the creek okay so here's what happened uh, just as we were crossing the creek uh, the battery crapped out this is uh, equipment failure weekend uh, improvise overcome and adapt that's what we're doing uh, down here just out of sight is the crossing for Boswell Creek turn around right here at this little corner we're at and there you'll see at the top of the hill a little sign on the other side of that sign it says pipeline right away and we're just going to walk to the top of that little hill. Okay, and we get to the top of the hill by the sign. Take a little turn to the right. And there is Hidden Lake in all its glory. You can also see it's raining quite a bit. We timed it just about right getting here. It was a little rainy on us while we were walking, and now it's a lot rainy on us. Now over there on the point of land, you can see the uh, see my tarp, and you can just barely make out Cody trying to get a fish supper. But uh, I can tell you, like I said. The timing was pretty good. My my socks are just now 
starting to get wet. I'm just now starting to feel them. I don't think I could walk another couple of miles with my feet getting as wet as they are now. So I'm going to go over and uh, pull my feet out of these shoes and sit and dry for a little bit. Get myself a little bit of meal. And then, oh, lollygag, take a nap, eat some more, you know, hard stuff like that. Well, this is a trip to Hidden Lake.